Hello guys, uh, welcome to the third video in this series. So in the last video we created our uh, game window, uh, which you can see right here. Uh, it's a founder by founder window. And uh, so in this video we're going to be creating the game background. We're going to make the background scroll. Okay, uh, but before we uh, go there, I want to change my game width and height. Uh, I don't want to use uh, the, uh, I want to use 800 by 400. Okay, so that the width is larger than the height because the enemies is going to be coming right from the right side to the left, so you know, it's supposed to be horizontal like this. Okay, um, the next thing I want to do is uh, to move these magic numbers away from here. Okay, so I'm going to right click and make a new file here and then it constants to h right there. And this will contain the game width, so this game width is going to be like. Uh, so this one we have a 800 times game height, and this one's going to be 400. Now we also need the FPS, okay? Uh, so this one's going to be 60. So right there. Okay. So right here we're going to include that constant header times the range right there. So now we're going to change this to game width and game height, pretty much. Good. So once we've done that, uh, once we're done with that, we're going to change this to FPS. So we're going to convert it by FPS. Nice. Okay, so this will allow us to just include this header file in all the uh, source files and we can just use it, okay? Uh, with that said, also I want to change the background color. I want to change it to black, right there for my game, so that you see now we have this. Okay, cool. So next, so let's quickly start working on our background class. Okay, uh, but before we do that, I want to organize this thing a little bit. So I'm going to create a game class because I don't I just, I just want to put all the uh, functions and I don't want to cloud this main the CPU too much so I'm gonna create that one uh quickly in the second extension before just in so class in uh right there for minutes with update spell up this correctly void render void handle Handling uh, and this code. So if you have any other just you can put it in right here. Uh, now come to the private field. Nothing to be put here for now, but we're going to populate that in a minute. So make a new file, give it a CPP, include the, the H file right there. This is the constructor. Uh, Right, so we have all our implementations ready. Uh, the next thing I want to do is come right here and change uh, the to this one. Okay, that will help me here. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm adding my source file to my executable so that C may can help me compile those things. Uh, the next thing I want to do is um, uh, put my game inside my main the CPP file. Uh, so I'm going to include right here. Uh, So let's go back in there for a minute. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna create my game. And just a normal game object. Doesn't have any special thing to do here. So after this, we're gonna call game.net. And then update game.update. Pretty much here, game.render. Game that handle and then 
Before we go for the events, we need to do the course. Cool. Uh, so that will help us learn the game class. Cool. So now let's start with the background. Okay. And I uh, was meant to show you guys this thing that I remember. Uh, I was going to show you guys the uh, Allegro 5 reference manual. This is the PDF version of the reference manual, so you can download it and follow along with the uh, uh, the reference manual is very useful because it contains all the uh, like five functions, definition, constants, and some of the uh, all of the various things you need to know to use the like five. So if you're stuck or you, if you don't understand something, you can easily just come here and follow uh, and read uh, some of the uh, instructions or you know guides that is inside this reference manual. So I'm gonna link to the reference manual in the, in the uh, description so you can download it. Uh, it's gonna be very useful. So Keep it, uh, uh, keep it aside at all times. We'll be using it all the time in this tutorial, okay? So if I want to explain stuff, I'm going to come here and show you uh, the, where it is in the reference manual, how to how explain it, and we're going to use it to clarify lots of stuff. So keep that uh, in mind. Uh, so for my background, I'm going to make a new file here. Let me background page here, class background. Well, what does the background class have? Before we continue, let me change my indentation. Okay. So, what does, my, what does the background class have? Let's see. Right. Well, so for the constructor, we need to do uh, is the uh, other string right here. Uh, so let's do the string of So our background doesn't need to charge anything else, right? Uh, just for the call update. Do I join the end back? So uh, we also need this post to dispose of our uh, whatever we do for our background. And here I'm gonna reload. Allegro right here. Uh, so, Allegro, I'm going to call this, uh, so I'm, this is an image right here. I'm loading an image, so I'm going to call this background image, just like that. So, I'm loading, so all the images are, bit, uh, Allegro, are bitmaps in Allegro 5, okay, so they're called Allegro bitmap. And you see I'm making a pointer to it right here, which means, uh, and a Lego function is going to be creating the bitmap from there and returning it so I can store it here. Okay. Uh, so let's implement this. Uh, okay. I also need two more things uh, the X and Y. So, yeah, oh, sorry. This X is what? Pretty much. Yeah. All right. So let's right click and make a background. Let's see. Class, uh, we're going to hit the file. Uh, so this one takes in a string value. What? Cool. I have to do this again. Sorry about this shit. Anyways, so we're going to do. Uh, Background image goes to uh, the map. We are going to be finding what we are going to find. If not background image, we can do something else here. We are not going to be background image. Okay, so I'm gonna pass in uh, and that's that. Cool. And we have an error right here. Uh, that's a bit mad. Oh, finding the C string, taking the C string, not a, not a STD string. <laughs> so 
Alright, so once we're done with that, we're gonna go to uh, update. I thought we just gonna update. And uh, now for the dispose, he'll destroy it not. I'm going to put in the background image so that when we close our program, this background image will be destroyed. Cool. Uh, so now, what, what are we doing next? Well, now it's important. Let's see. Uh, so once we now update function, let's render it. Let's, let's do this. So we're going to, our background is going to scroll towards the left uh, in the x direction. So I'm going to do x minus equals 2. Okay. So it's going to scroll to every, uh, should we scroll to the left or to the right? I'm just going to scroll to the left and see what happens. Good. So, um, okay. And then, I need to include my constants the h and constants the h and then so if x is less than um b x equals x equals zero right there okay so we're setting our x so basically we're saying we're taking our x for uh our bitmap, okay, and we're saying we're taking away two from it everything. So when it is less than minus game width, I'm gonna show you what, what that is in a minute. Uh, so L draw scale map. pretty much. I'm gonna draw a bitmap, I'm gonna draw the uh, background image. Uh, before we proceed, let me show you where L scale this so they will draw scale and what it does okay so you search for that and you show in a minute yes. yeah we have a couple of ones right here they will draw scale yeah here is your draw scale so you see uh, it takes in a regular bit map so sex y with height and destination dimensions and flags so here you see it says draw the scale version of a given bitmap to a target bitmap okay so it means i have to take my background image and draw it to my display because my display is also a bitmap all right so it takes in a source x the source x is a uh, uh, x y uh the source width the source width is going to be the uh bitmaps width so uh, get bitmap width uh, okay. okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So background image. Means want to draw all of this image to. Oh, sorry. This one's supposed to be zero, zero. Okay. Uh, to X Y. Uh, so the width now is going to be to the game width. So why am I doing this? Well, let me show you guys in a minute uh, why I'm doing this. Oh, I need uh, one last parameter of flags. Let's set up to zero. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so why I'm doing this is uh, because if you look at our bitmap right here, we discovered that our uh, this, the dimensions of this bitmap. Okay, let me see if I can show you the properties of this bitmap. I can find it right here. Right. Uh, anyways, I guess, let me try to find the bitmap and show you guys what the bitmap looks like. Uh, the size of the bitmap, okay? Yeah, so I have it in red right here and I have a stars.jpg. So if you check the image, you discover that it's 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels, okay? And our game bitmap, our game's bitmap, our game screen, sorry, uh, is just 800 by 400. So we definitely want to scale this, okay? Uh, so that it fills the entire screen, but not in the USB, okay? So that's that. Um, 
So that's what we did right here. We scaled our bitmap down to so fit our screen, basically. Uh, that's that. Uh, what else do we need to do? Uh, and then, okay, so here we're going down, so we're going to draw another one. Okay, I'll draw scale bitmap again. Actually, I'm just going to copy this one. Okay. I'm going to explain what I'm doing in a minute. So, but this one is not going to be drawn at, at the X position. This one is going to be drawn since our X is just increasing. We're going to be drawing it at the end. Okay. So, we're going to be drawing it at the end. So, we're going to be drawing uh, game with plus X. Just like that. And that will help us. Uh, achieve what is called the parallax effect okay so the parallax effect where it's going to look like everything is just uh everything is just scrolling uh, i'll show you what that is in a minute uh, so let's go to our game header file quickly and include uh, background uh, h nice uh, background, background right there okay I'm gonna come to game.cpp and then I'm gonna do well, this one too needs that uh, indentation guide for apart from this indentation nonsense, this ID is really cool, okay? So you should try it out. Apart from this indentation nonsense, of course. Um so to initialize my uh background we do background and then it needs to find me so we're gonna put uh res slash start the I believe that's the new part there. Let me check. Starts the GPG right. So once we're done once we're done with that, we're gonna go come right here to back uh, update uh, to find it, so we have to make that rotation. Um, we have to render the background, render, and of course, this post. And then we dispose the background just like that, okay? So let's test this to see if it's working, but before that, let me add the background class to the assume source files, background the CPP. Now let's see if we compile properly and we don't get any errors. Nope, we don't get any errors, but we get errors right here, okay? So according to this, it says, uh, could not load the background image, please check your uh, image pass correctly, or start, start the JPG. Well, rest is here, and start the JPG is here, so what the heck is happening? Well, let's try to see, uh, I think, uh, well, okay, I'm just gonna take this and put it in the build directory. I think the build directory is the uh, working directory. I'm gonna run this again. Okay, it's still giving me the same error though. Let me check. Uh, well, this is res, this is tiles.jpg. Nice. So, what the hell is happening? Mm -hmm. Res slash stars to jpg seem to not be able to find my I don't know why I'm doing I'm not sure actually Oof. this is interesting Oof. amazing at the same time let me check my background class okay mm -hmm. It should load the background correctly. Res slash stars the JPG. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so I figured out where the problem was coming from, and it wasn't because of the it was finding the path, but it wasn't able to load the background image. And the reason for that is because in my, right here, 
I told you that before we can use an uh, uh, an add-on for the like, file, we have to initialize those add-ons. So I didn't do that, and that's why it wasn't working. So I'm gonna initialize right now. I like do image like there. So I didn't initialize the image add-on. So I was loading the image, and it wasn't working. You no, know, it wasn't loading it because it couldn't load it. No. So that was it. So here I'm gonna have to install in the keyboard. I'm gonna call it image image add-on. I was wondering why it wasn't working. So now I realize that I have I didn't initialize my image add-on. Okay. So that's how you do that. And let's try it again now. I haven't tried it. Okay, so we have another error and it says undefined reference to error in the video. So we have to link we we have to link this add-on library. So we do our simic list the text and uh, call Right, image just like that okay i will link that okay so let's compile and run this again and voila our screen is crawling or our background is crawling if i make it like that so that's how you have a scrolling background okay uh, so i think so you can call it the parallax effect or whatever Okay, and this is gonna scroll indefinitely, and you wouldn't even know it's one image that scrolled. So what did we do? Uh, let me just quickly go and show you guys, uh, give you guys a little recap of what we did. Okay, so I loaded the background image with here a little bit map. Okay, if you want to know what the little bit map does in depth, or you want to, you have information about that, contact the documentation. I'm gonna be linking. So contact the documentation. I'm gonna be linking. Uh, at the end of this video okay in the description of this video rather uh so uh so in my uh, background in the uh, constructor i loaded the background based on whatever file you passed into me right here good and then i set my x to decrement by two every time so this simply means that when you decrement x by two you are offsetting the bitmap okay so that bitmap is going to move by two by min uh, it's gonna move by minus two in the x direction every frame, and so I am saying here that if x ever uh, becomes less than minus k, which means basically if I ever scroll up to uh, 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 if I ever scroll up to a point where my uh, bitmap is not visible anymore, then I'm gonna set my x back to zero, you know, wrap up to the other side. Okay, so I'm drawing twice here because I want to draw. Uh, this one is gonna draw, you know, uh, and scroll to the off screen. But this one is gonna draw and follow it straight, straight to the on. So this one is gonna, this one is gonna draw from the on screen to the off screen. But this one is gonna draw from the off screen to the on screen, and uh, so that's gonna follow each other. So by the time this one finished drawing, this one will have wrapped up, and then this one will, have, you know. So we start wrapping from the other side that way, and so that's how the parallax effect works. And uh, at the end here, we destroy our bitmap. We here destroy bitmap, and then we had our background scrolling. Uh, I think this video is already taking too long. Uh, see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.